Addison. Get your second listen in for the day. If you're here live, he's about to go live right now. If you're catching it later, you can head over and catch the uh, the, the pre-recorded version or the, the version that's still up across all your favorite podcast feeds. Go and check him out, and I'll see you tomorrow. Appreciate you, as always, making Locked on Saints. All your everyday is out there, your first listen of the day. As always, I appreciate you so much for making us a part of your day, part of your routine. As always, if you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on your favorite social media, at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know. Know how your mom and them and trust you that nation, I'll holla at you. All right, it's a live episode of Locked On Pelicans as the Pels unveiled their new Statement Edition jerseys, and I want to hear your thoughts on them in today's live episode of Locked On Pelicans. Plus, I'm going to share some info I probably shouldn't and might get in trouble over with the upcoming City Edition jerseys that you might see this season. It's a live episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. Here with y'all, it's Thursday, 7 p.m. Central, and that means it is a live episode of Locked On Pelicans. We do these every Thursday at 7 p.m. So make sure you never miss out. And if you're coming to me from the Locked on Saints live show with Ross Jackson, who was live right before me, welcome as I just drop my pen on the ground because I am so excited to be here with y'all and hang out. We're going we're gonna to get into our fashion sense. We good sartorialists here or something else. So I appreciate y'all being here with me today. For the live shows, the one thing I'm going to say for the chat, don't spam the chat. Ask your questions. We'll get to them. If we don't, we'll get to them in another show. It's easier for me to just like ban you from the channel than it is to delete your messages. I don't want to do that to anybody. So let's get right into it. So quickly, in the chat, do you like the new Statement Edition jerseys from the Pelicans, the Crescent City Statement Edition jerseys? And if you're an everydayer of Locked On Pelicans, and you should be, This doesn't surprise you because I've been teasing these for about a year or so right now. Thought they were going to be out there for last season. Turns out they got pushed to this season. But I told you they were all coming. They were going to refresh the Reds, basically. In terms of the jerseys here, and I see Ross saying, hope the internet's better. My internet's good now. We had some issues at one point here. He also asked, Jake, what's your thoughts on the Saints CB2 battle? I'm going to defer to you. And if a a Saints question gets asked in here, Ross, feel free to answer it or just push them to Locked On Saints. Again, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Oh, we got another celebrity in here. We got John O'Barnes here who says he likes them. If he likes them, then 
I don't know. It's pretty good in, in my opinion. I do have my this stuff more than a game shirts coming in that you'll see here on Locked On Pelicans. And maybe they should make those some sort of alternate jersey here. So this was an interesting choice for the Pelicans to do. You know, their blues and the whites are the standard jerseys, the home, the away, even though you don't really use them like those anymore. You don't wear just whites at home. You can kind of just choose what you want to wear. The reds being an alternate, I think are easier for them to get approved and come through with to refresh. And certainly the Pelicans needed a refresh of their jerseys at some point. I would have preferred the whites or even the blues be refreshed over the reds as I think all of them were the, uh, out of all of them, the reds were the best, but I'll take something a little bit different. You know what? They're clean. They're fine. You didn't need to redo the Reds out of all three that they've had, but you, I'm happy they did something, I think. So I like it. I like adding Crescent City in instead of just standard NOLA or New Orleans and doing something a little bit different. But certainly these jerseys are safe. And look, when it comes to the Pelicans and all of the in-arena experience and almost anything they do, they go safe. And I've told you all this on the show before. The NBA grades teams. They grade them on a number of things, including in arena experience. We can talk about this in today's show if you want, because this show is for you. We're going to be answering your questions. I kind of script out the first segment and then the second and third. We're going to go in whatever direction y'all want to go to. And I'm going to share some info that I probably shouldn't. And I'm probably going to get a phone call about because they're going to be mad at me over. But we're going to do that today for y'all. You know, the Pelicans do everything safe. Their in arena experience actually grades out as one of the best in the league because it's just, it's not offensive. It's easy. It's fine. It's safe. There's a little bit of local flavor, but there's not that much local flavor to it. And it grades out well because people can just go to the game and no one's walking away being like, what the heck? You might not be blown away by it, but the NBA is cool with that. That's kind of what these jerseys are. Look, they're clean. The Reds look good. I like that the numbers have the black lettering with the white outline versus the white lettering. It makes them look a little bit different. I think there could be more embellishments on these. The blue neckline and the blue stripes around them look a little bit jarring against the brightness of the red. And maybe you needed some white there to kind of differentiate it or gold, which is absent from these jerseys. But they're fine. They're going to look good wearing these. These definitely looked better on a player when you're seeing it with the pants I like the the different size piping striping on the side than I've seen in other photos of them so I'm curious what y'all think it seems like it's a mixed bag uh smurf takeoff says they're mid Aiden Orgeron says meh um we've seen a couple of people Mark Aber says they're not much of a statement energy slayer says they're all right see a number of you saying Every day are here, which I also love seeing. YouTube, literally the letter U and then tube. The red and blue together is such a bad mix. I agree with that. Um, we got people in from Japan here, in from Australia. This is a lot of fun here. Benoit Robinson says, you can't get in trouble, Jake. We'll back you up. Thank you. I'm sure y'all will take that bullet on the phone call that I'm going to get in the next segment when we, we're not going to fully spoil some things, but we're going to spoil some things. Um, Kevin Byers says the design does not entice an average fan to purchase. Design needs more wide appeal. You know, I think I think that's true and not. Like, I think it's fine. They're new. People will definitely buy them, and I don't think they look bad. It's just, as someone said, they're not much of a statement, right? But they're good. Um, someone says the promo video is nice, very nice. I agree with that. I love what they're doing with a lot of the promo stuff and everything else that they're doing um, to kind of add just a more NOLA flavor, a more NOLA vibe to what they've got going on here. Their production team, the people that work social media for them too, are often unsung heroes and they all do a really good job. I think the editing's great. I think a lot of the ideas are great. Even if like showing a bunch of croissants was at times like, come on. But in general, I kind of dig it. And, you know, I think you could have taken these in a different direction. The Brown Hornet says the jersey is okay, but I definitely prefer seeing Crescent City on the jersey over NOLA. I, I agree with that. I think if you had put Crescent City and done it a little bit more fun, like the kind of wording and font that they have in that promo video, in the images that they've released kind of as the background stuff, would have worked 
really well and giving them that kind of just flavor edge is maybe the right word uh, that people would have liked to have seen. But overall, like I'm not going to complain about these. Honestly, any of the jerseys that the Pelicans have released in the past couple of years, I don't really have a problem with. The city flag jerseys I thought looked pretty good, even if no one is like, we need a city flag jersey. The NOLA with the chevron on the white was awesome, and we want to see more of those. The Mardi Gras jerseys hit it. I kind of like the Mardi Gras Knights with the deep purple, deep blue on there too as a mix-up from the white ones. When they had the earned jerseys after making the postseason against the Portland Trailblazers and they took that Mardi Gras same kind of template and added the normal colors to it, I thought looked really good as well. So it works. You know, I see a lot of y'all saying a, a purple and gold or a black and gold would look cool. I'll tell you this, and we'll get into this coming up here next, and then we'll also take your questions and keep reading your comments out here on the live show. The next jersey is going to be a little bit different, but that's actually going to be case the case for the NBA as a whole. There's kind of a theme coming around things, and I'll share some of that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Before we get to that, though, today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's $200 you can spend betting everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. And plus, when you win... You get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on FanDuel official partner of Major League Baseball. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. If you're here in the live show with me, I appreciate y'all being here. If you're listening later, that's okay too. We do these every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central, even when the show drops down to three days a week starting next week. This will count as the Friday show. We'll have a new episode of Locked on Pelicans Monday, Wednesday, and then live show at Thursday, 7 p.m. Central. And if you're coming over from the Locked on Saints podcast, I appreciate y'all being here. That was fun. I like Ross jumping on in and getting on the live train here. So if you haven't listened to that yet or you're just joining for the Pels Talk, go listen to Locked on Saints. Make that your second listen in today's episode. So let's talk jerseys a little bit more. I think we kind of see there's just like a mixed, like, does everyone just kind of agree that like these jerseys are fine? Like they're fine. They don't blow us away. They're not bad. I just wanted, we just kind of wanted something different, right? I feel like that's kind of what everyone really wants. We just want something different here. Uh, and I think when it comes to the new City Edition jerseys, you're going to get something kind of different. So what I've been told from a couple of people around the league, not even associated with the Pelicans, ABJ504 with a comment, every single time, my man, this is the most loyal listener we have on here. If you go to every episode of Locked On Pelicans, you're going to see ABJ504 say comment in there. Literally every single episode, every single day. That is a true everydayer right there who wants to support the channel. And I cannot thank you enough for doing that. So the league wants to kind of do something to unify some of the designs, I believe. And they also want this to be kind of a narrative and there to be like just a little bit something more with the jerseys these next two seasons. So what I've been told kind of, and I don't know the extent of this or exactly what it looks like is the NBA wants to envision like the NBA of the future. What does the future of the NBA look like? Think like futuristic. I don't know if it's quite like space agey NBA or like slam ball, which has been fun to watch by the way. They want to kind of think of like, how does the NBA evolve? What's it look like in the future? And so what I've heard, and who knows whether this comes true or not, but I'm going to share it with y'all anyway, because you're here and I love y'all. I want to give you this kind of info is that the NBA wants to do two seasons of the city edition jerseys that tie together, that kind of look as, as the NBA involves, evolves, what's it going to look like? So As far as I understand, the City Edition jersey for the Pelicans this year is not going to be a Mardi Gras jersey. Instead, it's going to kind of have a futuristic-ish 
kind of bent to it. Doug Rosenthal, Rosenthal says here, oh great, Tron inspired jerseys. You're not too far off. Actually, I hadn't thought about that in kind of describing it that way yet, but yes. I saw someone in here say they wanted to see a black jersey. I just lost that comment here. A little bit, a little bit. I do think it's going to be dark. There's some other things to it. I've actually seen a mock-up of it here. And it's going to be very different than anything the Pelicans have done before. And I don't know if it's going to be the most like New Orleans looking thing to you based off what I've seen and things change. So don't for sure hold me to this. But this does seem to be pretty accurate, especially from talking to people around the league. There may be a gradient to it along those lines too. So that's what I think is coming. And this is a two-year process. So these jerseys are here, I think, for one year. And then it kind of evolves to another version of that jersey. So you get a narrative over two seasons when it comes to all of this. And I believe that's what it's going to do. You know, I've seen a couple people here in the chat say, let me ask you this. Do you want to see a black and gold Pelicans jersey? Do you want to see kind of a Saints-inspired Pelicans jersey? Aramis Jones says, I thought they were going to do a black and gold embroidered. You know, I think that could look cool. I think I've seen a ton of mock-ups that people have done that I think are absolutely fantastic, to be perfectly honest with y'all. You know, again, the Pelicans tend to play it safe. They're not going to do anything, I don't think, that's like truly out there, even though I would love something like that. And I think a lot of people would love something like that. This is just kind of the way they operate. It's very safe. It's got a wide appeal. And... You know, I think you could do a black and gold jersey, but I think they also want to have this brand, the Pelicans, separate from the Saints so it doesn't just look like, you know, the Pelicans are the little brother to the big brother Saints. Well, you're just doing their jerseys, right? Like, I, I do think that might create the wrong narrative that they don't want to have out there that people would run with. Even if those jerseys could look really cool, right? Inferno de Saint says, with our color scheme, pinstripes would be awesome. I'd love to see an old retro Hornets throwback that has the pinstripes, like the white and the, the teal or whatever the color was officially called, I think would be really cool. James Smith Jr. says, I would prefer the Pelicans establish their own identity away from the Saints. I, I think that's kind of how people who run the franchise do that. Locked on Saints says, separate the brands. Well, if Ross is saying it, well then, you know, I think that's the way you've got to go with it. You know, I think you could easily do in old Hornets colors, kind of the like street names, you know, how they're embedded into the sidewalk and things. And I think you could do that and would look really cool. And it kind of has ties into the old Hornets, even though they don't really use that because it just, you know, there's a Hornets out there right now, even though they use kind of different colors from everything as I almost break my chair here. Um, but I do think keeping the Pelicans kind of separate, letting them establish their own identity and not having it be like, well, they're just being cheap. They're using Saints colors and it's a ripoff and they're not going to spend and kind of create their own thing. I think they want to avoid that. And so, I, you know, maybe one day there will be a black and gold jersey, but I do believe that is not really something they have fully looked at with anything. In terms of other jerseys, say the home and the way, the standard one, right? Whatever they're called. You know, I don't know if those are going to ever get redone or not for a while. They've kind of tweaked them a little bit, changing the font size on New Orleans so it looks a little bit better. But right now it's going to have to kind of be alternate jerseys. And Aramis Jones has a great comment here. Pell's got to start winning more in order to develop more of an identity. Yes and no. Like, yes and no to that. We can talk about that maybe in the next segment. That's a good question, I think. You know, I do think you can do it other ways too, even if you're not winning, just purely based off of the look. People want to rep their, their, their city, their team, right? Even if they're losing, you're proud of that. Let me ask you all here. Like, do you proudly rep the Pelicans when you're out? Do you have a lot of Pelicans gear? I can tell you my closet is like 50% Pelicans, maybe like 30% Tulane, and then, I don't know, 20% something else. Even when they're losing, I rock all the Pels stuff. Have I told you all? I think I've told it all here. You know, I have one of the Boot Crew Media Not on Herb shirts, and I travel to Los Angeles for work a lot, and I always rep Pels and Tulane stuff when I'm out on the road. I went for a walk around UCLA, like, during the school year, and I wore my Not on Herb t-shirt, and I'm walking around UCLA, and everyone is just 
staring at me, staring at me. And I'm like, are these Benny People Pelicans fans out in Los Angeles? And I realize in California, I'm wearing a shirt that says not on Herb. And I'm just kind of out there being like, I am a square and I am proud of it. And I am uncool in California. So rock the Pelicans wherever you go, even if it makes people think that about you. So let's answer more of your questions, whether it's jerseys or just give me your thoughts and I'll read them out here on the show. If you got questions about on-court stuff, we can talk about that. Trades, other things too. I see someone talking about the USFL. New Orleans Breakers looks good and it's like a silver seafoam green and baby blue voice of reason. Yeah, I, I like that. I do think those actually look pretty good here. So let's keep talking your questions, whether it's your fashion sense or whatever it is. Have you ever been as uncool as I was wearing a not on Herb t-shirt like I did that one day? Because I feel mortified after doing that one and just wanted to like go away and never be seen in public again. So let's, let's talk more coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday for y'all, breaking down everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. Become an everydayer because if you're an everydayer, you will not miss out on any info you might want to know. Like the Crescent City jersey co- jerseys coming, which we've been talking about for over a year here on Locked On Pelicans. And then I just dropped some info I'm probably going to get in a little bit of trouble on. And it's okay because I do it for you, my audience. I always mean this. Whenever I say it, and I tend to say it a lot during the live shows, the show's for you. I do this show because of you. Yes, I like talking. I like talking about the team. But we do these live shows so that I can interact with y'all. And I appreciate you all taking any time out of your day, whether it's joining the live shows, whether it's listening once a week, or if you're an everydayer and listening five days a week, whenever it is, you're making Locked on Pelicans part of your day, and I cannot thank you enough. And now for your second listen, Locked on Saints. I was watching it right before. That's my actual first listen every day because I ain't going to listen to me talking on this show. So make sure you go check out Ross Jackson and the Locked on Saints podcast after you listen to this one. So let's keep talking about the jerseys or other things that you want to hear about when it comes to the Pelicans right now. This is kind of your time to shine. Thomas Atkins is... Atkinson says, hey, Jake, did you get your Alvarado jersey yet? I have it. It's like literally right there. We're redoing the studio. I'm putting more like soundproofing foam in here. There's a little bit more reverb that I want as I kind of redo all of this. So it's going to get right back here. I've got the uh, Dior Jordan and the like dripping Dior Jordan piece of art I have. That's going to go up on the wall. The wall might get painted. We'll see. So it's, it's coming. I just need to stop being lazy and drill some holes into the wall and kind of put that back up so you get the same background. But we're in the same place. We're all good here. Um, Aaron Jones says, I know the chances of us getting Jared Jack is minuscule, but I can't escape how good he looked with this team. You mean like as a player or as a, he's a coach now, right? He's a coach on the Warriors, isn't he? I think that's where he is right now. Jonathan uh, Durham says the city edition uh, looked good. What happened to him? They change those pretty much every year. They change the city edition almost every single year. They've been Mardi Gras jerseys before. They've been other ones too. Uh, that's what they do. Those get a, a new one pretty much every single year. Denny Roman says, put his eye on one too. Behind me, the, the Jose one is game worn. Jose one is game worn. So that one's going to get displayed prominently. Honestly, he's like one of my favorite two, three players on the team just because he's so much fun. Matt Harrison says, did you see Jose isn't playing with Puerto Rico? I did. And I saw Andrew Lopez of ESPN had tweeted out saying the team asked him not to since he's recovering from the injury and they want to make sure that he's ready for the season. I... It sucks for him because I know how much that matters to him. And I know we were all looking forward to the duel because it might have been a duel between him and Brandon Ingram in FIBA. So that would have been a lot of fun with it all. And I'm, I'm disappointed we're not going to see that. And I also do think playing in FIBA and playing for your national team kind of iron sharpens iron, as we talked about earlier this week, was a good thing. But I also want guys to be healthy to start the season here. Um What's the word? The other question go more than the jerseys. I wonder why we chose the name Pelicans. Do you know the story? I mean, it's the state bird. You had the old baseball team, minor league team here. That was the Pelicans. It made a lot of sense. They looked at some other names. They trademarked a number of other things, including Rougarou, which would have been really cool. And how cool would like a swamp Rougarou, swamp monster alligator uh, theme 
B for jerseys. That would be so awesome. I would buy those so quickly. I think most people would too, especially when you have like the voodoo low, uh, Jordan one lows that Zion did too. You can kind of theme it out with all of that. Like, I don't, I get that like people around the country are going to be like swamp themed jerseys. And I think it would be so like so badass to be perfectly honest. Um, Aris Jones says, I meant Jared, uh, uh, Jared Allen, but Jared Jack is a throwback. You said Jared Jack, right? Like I didn't mis misread that. Did I? And I just went on a tangent about Jarrett Jack, who, oh man, they traded for they traded for him thinking he would get Chris Paul to stay here. Ooh, uh, that was a, a, a thing here. Melvin McCraney Jr. says, what's up, Jake? I'm an everydayer. Just don't type comment. Just listen to the show. Enjoy listening to the show. That works too. If you want to be an everydayer and listen, wait, look, if you listen once a week, I'm thrilled about that. You want to listen from one day a week to two days a week? That's cool too. I appreciate you all but I really appreciate the everydayers. That's why we do this show. And so it's awesome that you're listening in and tuning in. So I appreciate y'all making Locked On Pelicans part of your day. Okay, let's get into this one. Michael de Blasio, how much of a problem do you think Zion's stepfather is to him in the grand scheme of things? This probably needs to be its own show. And, and I struggle with this one a little bit. You know, I, I struggle to, with this one a little bit because look, I'm not Zion... I don't know his life having grown up, right? We know kind of what's been reported and what's out there and what we kind of assume. You know, I, I don't want to say his stepfather's a bad influence or anything like that because Zion might not be where he is without Lee Anderson, his stepfather. You know, and without having kind of lived that experience, I, I don't want to talk negatively about someone that I don't know enough about or know specifics about. And that would be the entirely wrong thing to do here. And I don't want to be hot takey or anything like that. I've seen the stuff about the $1.8 million lawsuit. You know, I've seen what it alleges there about Lee Anderson. I don't know. I don't know. You know, Lee played college basketball for Clemson, though he doesn't have a particularly good statistical record playing for Clemson. You know, he said he could have played in the NBA, but who really knows? You know, should Lee Anderson be his trainer, his dietitian, all of those things? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You know, we've seen Zion Williamson come into the season in shape. We see how talented he is when he is playing. If Lee Anderson has had a role in that, Lee Anderson has done a good job. When Zion plays... We all know how good he is, right? That's, that's, that's an all-NBA guy without thinking. That's a guy that's in the MVP conversation. It's what happens when the injuries come up and some of the other things. And that's where I think it might be fair, somewhat fair, to question him. But I don't really know. So I don't want to pass a ton of judgment on someone like that because clearly he's played a, a, a prominent role in Zion's life. And Zion's really good. Re really good. If he had a credit, you got to give him credit for that too, along with the bad, right? So I know people want to kind of vilify him, but Zion probably doesn't get to where he is today without him. And I think this player is so talented. I've been on the record for a long time saying I wouldn't trade him. I wouldn't do all of that. You know, the issue comes up of when adversity strikes. Is that when Lee Anderson's a problem? Maybe, maybe not. Is that just a Zion thing? I don't know. The other question we have to ask is, does Zion have a problem with this? And if he doesn't, you know, I don't know if it's our place to say, Kevin Byers says, very diplomatic, Jake. And, you know, I think it's valid to question. I think it's valid to question some of it, not as much as maybe gets put out there. I think at times there's a little too much kind of vilifying him with that, but I do think it's okay to question some of this stuff. But you also have to acknowledge the good, too, and Zion is a very talented basketball player. You know, he seems to have a lot of control, but look, I'm 37. When I bought a car a couple of years ago, I talked to my parents about it. It's like 35, 34, second car I bought, and I asked them their thoughts on things like that. There's not, it's not wrong to lean on other people, especially when you're 21, 22, and as young as a guy like Zion is. You know, it's not that does he have like his best interests at heart. I don't think that that's a question. It's just are the methods the correct methods and could you do this better? And if that's the case, get those people that can do this better. I think that's really what it kind of comes down to because this team is going to live or die next season with Zion being healthy or not. When he plays, he's good and we've seen him be in shape. So there's a give and take with 
all of this, you know, and I do think it is valid to question those things. I don't know if we need to like rush to judgment and be like, got to get rid of this guy or something like that. Cause clearly there's been a positive influence on there too. Jameson said, Buffler says every day are from a small town in Australia, either under 800 people who live there. That's awesome. Question, would a Nikola Mirotic reunion make sense now that he's a free agent? Barcelona don't want him back. You know, maybe they need a stretch big like that. You know, he's been out of the NBA for a little bit. Would it make, you know, is he still, can he still be the same kind of player? He, he was good for Barcelona. He was good in Europe. You know, I wouldn't hate that idea. He was a fun player to have on this team. And in theory is kind of, you know, an ideal-ish big doesn't have like the rim protection the defense you want he's not brooke lopez but yeah i think so that wouldn't be the worst thing they could do the problem is where they are with the luxury tax 2.9 million dollars over you know do you want to get deeper into the tax for mirtich eh, maybe not if he keeps the beard and it's part of the beard fam that's maybe a case too energy slayer says jig is lying there's no way you're 37 you look 27 at most Thank you. That was very kind. We can, we can keep saying I'm 27 here. Um, but Miritich makes some sense, I think. You know, does he want to come back to the NBA? Does he want to be overseas? He, you know, he's been over there for a while. Sometimes guys leave the league and don't really want to come back. You know, it could just simply be that. He didn't love the business side of things. He didn't like that when he was traded from the Bulls to New Orleans, he had to move his kids. And then when he was traded from New Orleans to the Milwaukee Bucks, that he had to move them again. That stuff kind of really was rough on him and he didn't like uprooting his family like that. So maybe he doesn't want to come back to the NBA with that. But yeah, I think teams should be calling about him and inquiring him. I think that would be a very good thing here. Denny Roman says, first time watching live. I love it. Thank you here. Derek also says, every day, but my first time catching a live show. Y'all can bookmark it Thursdays at 7 p.m. We're going to do this till the season starts. And I think these are a lot of fun. I really enjoy interacting with y'all, getting your questions here. It makes my job a little bit easier, too. So, so thank you. Jonathan Durham says, convince Sebron will be a diamond in the rough if given a chance. You know, I, I think he might get an opportunity. Gus Cattengill, who called the games for the Pelicans in Vegas, really feels that way. Thinks he could have a role on the team if, you know... Kyra Lewis Jr. gets moved. You have a need for another guard. Could be Sebron on that two-way. You know, they also have two other two-ways, which we'll talk about. I know people have questions about Liam Robbins and others, and I think those are people they're going to be looking at for two ways. There's just not a ton to really get into with some of that stuff just yet. Matt Harrison says, if Zion is injured next season and beat ass out, would you trade him then? Like, yeah, that's an easy one. Like, yeah, if you could get Embiid for Zion after an injury season for Zion, like, sure, I think you do that easily. Uh, Noel G says, Jake, Mr. Every Day are here. I love it. What is your starting five and top five reserves? Uh, we'll, we'll do that a little bit closer to the season. I mean, you know what the starting five is. It's essentially the same starting five as last year. The question is, will Trey Murphy be in there or not? Let's assume no for right now. So then your reserves are Trey, Jose, Nance, Liddell, Najee, probably something like that. I'm probably missing a player. Dyson Daniels is in there somewhere, probably over Najee. I think that's what it would end up being. We'll do a show on Joel Embiid. So the plan for the offseason is this. We're going to drop to three days a week next week. Mondays are going to be countdown days, top five days, top 10 days, top five players in franchise history, top five worst players in franchise history, top five most annoying players in franchise history, anything like that. If you got a countdown one you want to hear, let me know and it might get used on the show and I'm going to be curious to give you my list and see what y'all think too. Wednesdays are going to be what if Wednesdays? What if Zion is healthy all season? What if Zion is hurt and doesn't play much next season? What if they win the title? What if they make you know miss the playoffs? And then Thursdays are going to be the live shows at 7 p.m. Central. So we'll keep going here for a little bit longer. Ernest Jones says, do you think there's any chance we could get Tyus Jones out of Washington? Like, yeah, I think everyone could, you know, I think that's, it's a good backup guard, right? Spot starter for you at times. I don't know if they really need that type of player. Again, you know, they, they don't have a true point outside maybe like Jose Alvarado kind of. Because they have so many additional other ball handlers that I don't think 
they're looking to do that. It's kind of ball handling by committee, I think. So Tyus Jones would work. Does he have the right role on this team, maybe with the second unit? Or do they want to kind of give that role to Dyson Daniels, who was doing those sorts of things? IM says, think it's time for Gail Benson to go. I actually just did kind of a show on this. If Gail Benson goes, this team probably gets moved. Right now, today, if Gail Benson goes and they get a new owner tomorrow, this team probably gets moved. They don't have a long-term lease or reason, you know, things that tie them here. Now, there's other people that will prevent that from happening, people, you know, around ownership. But, you know, if you want another owner, long-term lease has to happen first, I think, with all of that. Um, Smurf Takeoff says, top five fan favorites. Yeah, Energy Slayer says, Eric Gordon is number one in most hated and probably most annoying, I think. Um, he's going to top a couple of lists there, too. I have some... I have some weird ones for like least favorite Pelicans Hornets that weren't like actually bad. Just players for whatever reason who annoyed me. So we're going to have some fun with that list because everyone's is, like Gordon's going to top a lot of those. Then it gets like weird. And I got some weird and kind of funny reasoning for there. Remember Brian Roberts? Like that dude on my like least favorite players is up there, but not for the reasons you think. And I'll tell you on that episode of Locked On Pelicans when we get there. So that's where we're going to wrap up for today. We've got like 30-something minutes here. So I appreciate you all making Locked On Pelicans part of the day. If you came over from the live Locked On Saints show, maybe we'll plan these out a little bit more and have fun like this where we do one, then the other, and you get an hour of the talk that you want to hear exclusively part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. No one else is giving you the jersey info like this. And Ross Jackson of Locked On Saints is just, man, he dude's the best at breaking down everything. He's at training camp, dealing with the heat and everything there too. So after listening to Locked On Pelicans, if you haven't listened to Locked On Saints, go make that your second listen today. And I just love y'all. Thanks for being here with me. This was a lot of fun. I'm excited to keep doing these again. We'll drop down to three days a week starting on Monday. We're going to kick it off with one of those top five, top 10 lists. So let me know what your lists are too. If you got topics for the show, let me know as well. And as always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. And I'll see y'all on Monday. Thanks for being part of the live show.